Hello guys, Teddy here. I have Chinese food right now. Amazing, by the way. But, we're here for another Road to Gondo video. This episode was a long time in the making, and actually I haven't even finished selling everything while writing this script, but I couldn't wait any longer to start working on it. So starting out with the thing I invested the most flux in. This is kind of a flashback to episode 2 of the series, because I invested in Shadow Caches again. Although I invested more this time. In episode 2, I invested 622,440 flux. This time I invested 850,400 flux. Kind of bumping it up by 200,000. I also used the same buying method that I did last time, only buying stacks of caches under 400 per each cache. I ended with around 2,126 caches purchased, but I also farmed a lot on the side, making my end result up to 3,026 caches because I farmed around 900. And if you're wondering, it was very easy. I just met this guy in game. We didn't even have to say anything to each other. We just knew. We're like Sasuke and Naruto, we're like a perfect fucking team, dude. Selling at 499 each, I made 1,060,874 flux just from the caches I purchased. For the caches I farmed, which was the 900 I farmed, selling at 499 each, I made 449,100 flux. Combining both, I had a total of 1,509,974 flux. Taking away the investment, I made 659,547 flux profit off Shadow Tower Day this week. If you're wondering how much profit was made off of the investment only, only the 850,000, the 2,000 caches, I made 210,474 flux profit from the caches. So still the majority of it was the one that I farmed, but you know, that's still free flux. So, I mean, who can fight that? Shadow caches are the easiest flip in the game right now, in my opinion. And if you have a lot to invest, I'm convinced that you will see at least some return. Okay, so now that the biggest investment is out of the way, let's move on to the smaller investments in the room. While browsing the market on gathering day, I came upon something very, very nice. Sunlight bulbs were being sold in mass at a discounted price. Being the smart boy that I am. I bought them up and ended at a total of 14,295 sunlight bulbs, all bought at below 15. Most of the ones I bought were around 10 each. I spent 154,171 flux. And now you may say, Teddy, why the fuck did you buy those if they only go up five flux? Are you retarded? And my answer to that is no. It's because they were being sold in mass. I knew the normal price for sunlight bulbs was 15 plus each. So them being sold at 10 each was a great deal because I knew the price would go up eventually. This is why you need to memorize the prices of the items you want to flip because deals pop out of nowhere. Well, getting back to the flip, I started selling at 15 flux each in stacks of 250. After a while, as predicted, the price went back up to 15. And actually right now, the last time I checked yesterday, I just woke up and I haven't been on Trove yet, but yesterday the price was at 17. So if I had waited more, I could have made even more profit. I just didn't feel like waiting. But I had made a total of 214,425 flux, and in the end, I made a profit of 60,254 flux profit from this flip. Also, you need to keep in mind the reason they were so low is because, like I talked about in the first episode of this series, people will go out and farm mass amounts of sunlight bulbs and just plop them on the market at whatever price because they just want a quick buck. And I'll take that, I'll buy it, and I'll make easy fucking 60k off of it. I probably made more than he made farming the fucking sunlight bulbs in the first place. But after this flip, I decided to try something to help all of the people who don't have a lot of flux, but still want to start making either investments or just want to buy something. I decided to just farm random ores. So to do this, I decided to buy 1,000 bombs, which in my case only cost me 28,000 flux. A small investment anyone should be able to make, but if you can't, you can always just run around and laser mancy it, but like, I mean, that's really gay, so I didn't want to do that. Then I chose to start mining in Kandoria because it seemed like the best choice because one golden soul spawned there quite frequently and primordial flames also spawned there as well as just general shape stone formicide infinium you know now on formicide and infinium i decided to stop mining those around 20 minutes in farming because it took two bombs to get one of the infinium ore veins so two bombs equals 56 flux i figured one vein of infinium selling at like four each that's probably not enough to make back that cost so i decided to just stop mining infinium because i figured it just wasn't worth it. Something else very important to note is you should prioritize golden souls as golden souls are 900 each and I was able to get 71 of them off of golden souls alone I made 63,900 flux making back all of my flux and making profit off of just golden souls. So if you wanted really you could just go into Kandorian and start mining golden souls. 
just do that like just mine golden souls if you don't want to purchase bombs or anything but something i did notice is they do spawn under veins they spawn like under shape stone and stuff that's probably where i got the majority of my golden souls so still i recommend buying bombs you should probably do that but at the end of farming i had made a total of 173,009 flux and subtracting the investment i made i made 145,009 flux just off of farming random orbs in kandoria with just bombs also by the way i didn't keep track of the time but i did record all of it and the recording was over two hours long just over two hours long it was like two hours and six minutes which means i was able to make 140k in just two hours and it's not on gathering day so this is just flat game so after this i decided to wait till dragon day and start farming dragon fragments in u9 water worlds just to collect some easy flux and see how much i can make anyways the only investment I'm making is time, so it's a 100% gain in terms of flux. I didn't keep track of how long it took, but I know it was a few hours, but I ended up making 144,000. Not very much in terms of Dragon Day, but you know, I mean, still, it's just free flex. But for all of the people who are like really low level, like really, really low level, I'd recommend getting U9 and just waiting till Dragon Day. Go into a water world and just wait for someone to say, oh, I have a flack, oh, I have a deep sea dragon. And then you just put an X in the chat, which means invite. You know, this was a short one, but there wasn't really much to talk about. All you do is just kill the dragons, collect their fragments and the loot collector. It's pretty simple. But yeah, all of this, including the previous episode, bought my fucks pocket up to a round. Last time I checked, it was five. 5.4 million and at this rate i'll have gone to really fast like faster than i expected but you know that's pretty good anyways i hope you guys enjoyed this road to ganda episode and by the way no i will not give you my flux you lazy fuck